Welcome back to OASP Juice Shop. So this is also part of the Contia Pentas Plus pathway in Dry Hack Me. Now in today's video we will go over task 5 and task 6. Now in task 5 and task 6 we will go over sensitive data exposure. We will expose sensitive data and answer the questions. And who is flying this thing? We're going to demonstrate a couple of stuff like uh, the exploitation of either vulnerability and we'll also uh, expose some hidden directories. So let's convert this written walkthrough into a verbal detailed explanation. So basically let's go over sensitive data exposure. So what do you mean by sensitive data exposure? So basically when I have a web page like that and I want to look for sensitive data, I will need to look over every single page. So in this challenge, if you go to About Us, and if you read through the text here, we will see that there is um, a highlighted green phrase here saying, check out our boring items of use if you are interested in such lame stuff. So basically, and this phrase is hyperlinked, as you can see. Now, if you click on that, it redirects you to a web page or a text, a page that displays text about legal information. Okay, now this is basically not a sensitive data exposure yet, but as you can see here, we have some interesting directories. So legal.md, that's understood. We have FTP. So if you remove legal.md here, you will see we will have access to FTP directory. And this is kind of uh, permission error or permission stuff from the uh, site administrator. Now I was able to I was able to view the FTP directory and its subfiles. Why? Because the administrator or the site developers has incorrectly configured the permissions of FTP directory in their site to be viewed by everyone. And everyone, when it comes to users, it includes anyone who visits the website. So basically, when we have access to such directories, this is called sensitive data exposure. We have access to directories slash files that were not meant to be viewed by public users, such as us. Now, this is the first demonstration of uh, this uh, challenge. It's not challenge, it's only demonstration, but let me call it this way. So it is required if you want to get the flag, you download the acquisitions file. And you click on save as you save it i have already done that as you can see we click on cancel so copy that to clipboard and we answer the first question so the next one is pretty obvious they've given you the email and the password to log in and this is actually uh, important and necessary to do the next step, which is the backup file. That's why they had you uh, logged in with these credentials. So let's log in now with the credentials that are given. Account login, the password, Mr. Nodos. And of course, this is the second flag, pretty meaningless, but anyway, we answer with the question. All right, now the next step is we download the backup file. So if you go back to the exposed directory, we see a backup file called coupons, no, uh, back package, JSON back. Now, if you try to download this, you click on that, you will get an error saying that only .md and .pdf files are allowed. So, which reminds me, when we used to upload files to a web server for an application, um, and, the file, and the web application has kind of filter that checks for the extension of the file, and if the extension of the file is not in the whitelist or not, is not in the allowed list, it throws an error saying that you cannot upload certain files or we're only allowed to upload uh, JPG files or whatsoever. This is kind of similar, but in the opposite direction, which is downloading files. So one way to get around this is to type .md, one way to try not to get around because it's not going to work. So if you type this, 
it's going to say this doesn't exist. So you see, when we append it, the dot md did the work. We wanted to trick the application into thinking that package JSON back is actually not the back file. It is md file, which is in the allowed list, but this didn't work. Now, as I told you guys, when we used to upload files, when we wanted to bypass the restrictions imposed by the web app on the uploading files, we used to inter intercept the request with perp suite and then change the extension of the uploaded files to bypass the restriction. But in the case of downloading files, if you want to download a file that has an extension which is prohibited from being downloaded, all you have to do is to type a null byte, a poison null byte, which is called poison null byte. So this one is like that. You type percent twenty five zero, which, and then you type dot md. Why dot md? Because only PDF and md are allowed. You can't type md. You can't type PDF. What does this mean? It means that the web application will look in the URL, the IP directory, and it's. Here, as you can see, it knows that you are trying to download that, but since we have the null byte here, it will ignore or terminate the rest of the string, which nulls the rest of the string. Okay. So if we did that, you see we will be able to download this file, but in the extension md, if you type the same, PDF. We'll also be able to download this file but in the PDF format. Now, suppose this is a real case scenario. When we download the file, you want it to, or you want to get back to the file manager downloads. So this is the downloaded file, as you can see, .md and .pdf. All you have to do is to rename the file. I'm now being a Windows user, renaming from the graphical interface, and you get the back file. So the flag, let's get back. So the flag is this one. Hmm. All right. So that was for the task five R ah, don't look, which is exposing sensitive directories. And as you uh, have seen sensitive directories and files are exposed uh, due to a root cause, right? The root cause is weak file permissions or incorrectly misconfigured file permissions or incorrectly configured file permissions. Okay, click X on that and we head to the next task. Next task is who's flying this thing and it's about broken access control. We're going to go over all of this to be able to answer the flags. We will be able to do here. We will be able to view to um, you know access the administration page, and then we'll be able to, as you can see, view other users' baskets in e-commerce and play with the star reviews, which is kind of either vulnerability, uh, insecure direct object reference. Um, so we get started by, as you can see, it's asking to view view the page source. When we do that, view the page source. All the time we click on app or sources to view the main files in the application. As you can see, we have the root directory. And in the root directory, we have assets. It's like not a complete sitemap, but you can view the complete sitemap with uh, Proof Suite. So here we have a file called main.js. As you can see, it's not readable. So we click on the bracelets down here to make it readable. And if we look for admin, now what's the purpose of that? The purpose is to access the administration page. Most of the time when you want to uh, log in as an admin into an application, you want to find the administration page. One way to do that is to go through the sitemap of the web server or the web page, as you can see, and try to look for the administration page. One way to do that is to, you see, use or look for the string admin. So we have path administration. Now, if we try this, you're allowed to view this page, right? Why? Because this page is only dedicated to admin users. 
Okay, so as you can see, we couldn't access the administration page since we're not allowed to do that. But if we are logged in, as you can see here, and if we, oh, if we try it again, once, once we are logged in, we will be able to access it. As you can see, we can see the registered users. Now, that's not the issue here. So let's talk about viewing other users' baskets. So when you are navigating or browsing an e-commerce website and you add something to your basket, as you can see, the basket has three items for my account. Now, assuming that we want to see what are, what are the items that other users have added to their basket. And this is something that relies heavily on insecure direct object reference or the IDOR vulnerability. Now, how we can access other users' basket is, as I told you guys, boils down to the permissions and the access restrictions configured in the web applications. So let's see that in action. So I'm in my basket here. I want to see the other user's basket. What I'm about to do, I'm going to turn the Purpose Suite interceptor to be on and get back, refresh the page and examine what's going to happen when I wanted to see my basket. So from that conception, I'm going to build a process to access other users' baskets. So this is the request. As you can see, get slash nothing. So this is the homepage forward. As you can see, this is post request. This is uh, something we're not looking for. Forward, get socket. And this is also something not related. Forward, get REST admin application, also not related to the basket. Forward, get assets. Forward, so good. We want to look for a request, a HTTP request that does contain the string basket. Forward, forward, REST languages. Oh, we have REST basket one. So I have here, as you can see, the numeric one. So what if I change this to two, three, four, five? What I am able to see, we can see, we can check that. So instead of one, we can type two and we disable the intercept. See what's gonna happen. As you can see, we have, uh, as you can see, we another, oh, it's kind of like I'm not gonna able to talk anymore. <laughs> okay, so as you can see, we have a different basket and it contains only one product. So let's see, let's click the uh, contain this, uh, copy that and answer the question. No, nope. this one. Okay, now apart from answering the question, let's examine other ways to play with this. So intercept is on, back, No, nope, 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 nope. Okay, instead of two, let's try to type three. What's gonna happen? Uh, not so different. Let's see if there is something with the identifier zero. Forward, forward, no, 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 no. Okay, zero. Oh, empty. So we get an empty basket. So that's another user with empty baskets. So that's how we play with the checkout or baskets in e-commerce. This is the concept, right? But doesn't mean that it applies to every scenario. This is very basic and vulnerable example. But you get the idea from here. Um, now, another point is playing with user ratings. So if we get back to administration, We see here user ratings. So what's required here is we remove a user rating with the five star review. We click on that. Nothing happened. Oh, so a flag appeared, as you can see, because we have removed a one rating with five star reviews. And that's not about the review, of course. It's all about demonstrating the broken access control, right? Uh, that enabled us to access other baskets by playing with the parameters in Perp Suite, 
And that's all about, it, is, it comes down to directory traversal and idle vulnerability. Most of the time when we are able to access a directory slash file that where you, you're not supposed to have permission to access that directory or that file, it means that you are exploiting idle vulnerability or weak permissions on that file or that directory. Or it could be directory traversal if you're able to list hidden files, hidden directories. That was about this. In the next video, we will conclude the OWASP juice job with the last challenge. Where did that come from? And the exploration. So that was about this. See you in the next video.